Welcome back to Washington Watch. My name is Joseph Backholm, sitting in for Tony today. Last week on the program, we reported on news coming out of Haven, Kansas, where the city council voted to remove decals with the phrase, in God we trust from police vehicles, something that the police department had decided to do a few months ago. While well, a petition campaign spearheaded by FRC Action has gathered over 19,000 signers and was delivered to the city council ahead of their meeting today in support of keeping In God We Trust. And here to tell us more about it is Tim Throckmorton. He's the National Director for Community Impact here at FRC. Tim, good to see you today. John, it's great to see you as well. Thank you for having me. Well, we're glad to talk to you. Interesting story. For those who may be hearing about it for the first time, why would the city council want to remove In God We Trust from their police cars? Well, according to the meeting minutes, and I was looking at them again, uh, they felt like that uh, uh, this is something that's not appropriate for the police cars to have on them. And however... Uh, as you mentioned, the petitions that were signed by folks who are connected to the Family Research Council around the nation uh, total more than 19,000, and I, I have not delivered them yet. I am delivering them tonight at the council meeting in just a few hours in Haven, but I'm here. I uh, met with the mayor today. I talked to the police chief uh, yesterday, and I look forward to meeting a lot of good folks at the meeting tonight. Tim, tell us a bit about your meeting with the mayor. How did that go? Any progress? Well, he does not have a voting voice on the board. And uh, this is a fine Christian man, a business owner, and, and he's a, a believer in Jesus Christ. In fact, his pastor will be at the meeting tonight. And, you know, it's a little painful. He wanted to, he, in fact, he called me and wanted to let me know that this wasn't his uh, idea, although the, he, he answers to uh, city council, along with the, the chief of police as well. Uh, and it went well. He was a very uh, helpful. He's a wonderful believer. Uh, and tonight uh, it will come up. Uh, there are some folks that are going to be there to speak to the issue. And he expects uh, perhaps something to happen in regard to uh, whether it'll move forward or or be turned back, but, you know, he's a good, good man. And that's really here in Kansas. Uh, these are some great folks and it's just a few on the board who believe that this should come off of the uh, police cars. And, and Tim, tell us a bit about the arguments being made against this. There's going to be a, a city council meeting tonight. You mentioned the mayor. You mentioned the mayor's pastor. Uh, you will be there. I presume many other members of the community will be there. What's the significance of removing In God We Trust from police vehicles? Well, as the, the, the letter I'm going to deliver to uh, the city council tonight uh, it, it speaks about with the dangers officers face daily, they certainly need God's protection. And for that matter, this is our national motto. I flew into uh, Dwight Eisenhower Airport this morning, and here is the presidential library of Dwight D. Eisenhower, who, by the way, in 1956 was the one that uh, made... The, the motto of our nation, uh, in God we trust. So it's a bit ironic on that end, but I, I they, they just felt, or the, the members of the city council didn't think the police department was the proper forum to be talking about God. However, uh, 19, over 19,000 Americans believe that it is. And of that 19,000, over 500 are from Kansas, Joe. Now, Tim, it is a sign of the times that a small town in Kansas would think they need to remove the national motto from police vehicles because it says, in God we trust. Uh, we aren't in Kansas anymore, but I guess in this case, we are in Kansas anymore, and there's trouble in Kansas as well. But Tim, we talk about, you, you mentioned the town that we're in. It is a small town, around 1,200 people. 
who live there. But I also understand that we've learned that in the last election, less than 15 percent of the voting age population in this small town actually voted. Do you think a story like this, a development like this might change that? Well, I certainly hope so, and I believe it will. It has raised the level of awareness in this community like you and I have seen around the nation when, uh, when we discuss the issues and talk about the issues and make folks aware of this. It certainly raises the voter turnout and participation. Uh, Virginia is a prime example of that, but I believe in this beautiful little part of Kansas that these good folks are going to take note of this many of them already have, and it's a good opportunity to teach civics. It's a good opportunity uh, to bring them into uh, uh, hosting and uh, facilitating a community impact team and influencing their community uh, for the cause of Christ and for this nation's future. And we certainly hope they will do that. And Tim, we appreciate you and your presence there in leading that response, that gracious but strong and courageous response, because we don't want to be a country that is no longer willing to say, in God we trust. Tim Throckmorton, thank you so much for your time today.